Hi, Dennis Gardner here. I'm the manager of the ArtsQuest Glass Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to properly turn on our Raysist sandblaster system. This system's awesome because the pressure pot is connected to the blasting cabinet, so the blasting material stays in the system the whole time, and we're going to try to keep everything in the system, not out here on the floor. Today I'm going to be talking through the demonstration, but while you're sandblasting, I urge you and really require you to wear a respirator while you're using the sandblaster. So especially when you're going in and out of the sandblaster, you want to make sure you have your respirator on to keep your lungs nice and clean. All right, so the first thing you want to do when you go to turn on the sandblaster is make sure the final air valve right down here is closed and perpendicular to the air line. You want to make sure that's closed so that when we energize the system with air, there's no back spray of any blasting material. So we're going to go over here and we're going to make sure the air compressor is on and then we're going to make sure the main valve is open to the line. And that will put air down into this air dryer, which you're going to make sure is on by holding down this red button here for about three seconds. It's going to turn it on and this just dries the air a little extra so that we make sure we don't get any uh, buildup in our system in the sandblaster. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the main regulator and I'm going to flip that switch but I'm going to make sure that the next valve, the final air valve is off which I've already done. It's off. I'm going to now engage the main regulator and that puts the pressure into the main regulator and that regulator will cut the pressure down so it can properly go into the system. Now before you turn this valve on, it's very important to make sure that you close the door between the pressure pot and the blasting chamber. You do this by using this black handle over here and you just push it up and hold it up while you turn this valve on. If you do not hold this handle up, while turning this valve on, blasting material could spray back through the system and get out into the air and it's a big mess and we definitely don't want to do that. So after you hold that up for a couple seconds, it should stay engaged. You should see about 40 pounds of pressure on the dial here. And after you do that, you can turn your blasting cabinet on and you're ready to blast. Okay, once you have your blaster cabinet pressurized properly, you can then take the work and put it into the cabinet. Notice I don't have the chamber running. I want to make sure all the particulate has settled. Then I can open up the cabinet and you would usually have your face mask on, your respirator. You can put the work in the cabinet. Make sure the cabinet door is closed and latched. There are two doors. Make sure they're both closed and latched. And then you can step up and you're going to want to turn on up here in the top left of the unit, you're going to want to turn on the air suction as well as the light. And then you can begin to blast. So it's good to wear gloves. So to engage the blaster, you want to step on the foot pedal and that will start the blasting material coming through the gun. Okay, so when you begin to blast your work, it's good to start the blasting away from the work, so you'll see you'll get a little extra blast component to come through there at first, and then bring your blasting down onto your work. And in general, you want to kind of nice and evenly go back and forth to blast the work. Pay attention to your edges. So once you're done blasting your work, you want to turn off the cabinet, wait a minute, and of course you would have your respirator on. Once you see the particulate kind of settle down a little bit, you can come over and take your work out. And you want to try to keep the door closed as much as possible to keep the particulate in there. And remember, you're going to have particulate around it now, so try to keep that in the sink or contained. All right, once you're finished blasting, I'm going to show you now how to drain the pressure pot of pressure. You're going to turn off that last air valve. Now there's no new pressure coming into the system. You're now going to turn back on the cabinet so that you can step on the pedal 
and drain the pressure from the pressure pot. If you pay attention to the gauge here, you'll see it start to drop because no new pressure is coming into the system because you've sealed that final valve off. The foot pedal is letting all the air pressure from the pressure pot escape into the cabinet. And in a few seconds, you'll actually hear that door between the pressure pot and the blasting cabinet that's controlled by this black handle on the left. You'll hear that drop back open because there's no pressure in the pot to keep it closed. Once that happens, you've known you can turn your cabinet off because you know you've drained all the pressure from the pot. And this is good practice because it's not a good idea to leave pressure in the sandblasting system. And it's also a good way to set up for the next person who's using the sandblaster. After you do that, we're going to go and close the rest of the air valves. So the next valve to turn off is this main regulator valve. That will stop the incoming air from the compressor going into the main regulator. And then we're going to move over here to turn off the last valve. You can close this air valve that's from the compressor to the full line. As long as nobody in the hot shop's using the air. As long as nobody's using the air in the hot shop, you can turn off the air compressor. And then you can also turn off the air dryer system to save a little electricity by holding that button down for about three seconds and you'll see it go off. You can turn that off even if people are using the air in the hot shop. 